In this video, I'm gonna break down exactly what you need to know about the Vancouver real estate market, touching on all cities across the lower mainland so that you can cut through the headlines and the noise and get true perspective of exactly what is going on in the greater Vancouver real estate market today so you can make the best decisions for you and your family. Hey guys, my name is Mark Parsons and I'm a licensed real estate agent with eXp Realty, helping buyers and sellers make their best move in the greater Vancouver area. Area. If you love Vancouver and you want to learn everything real estate culture, what to do, where to go, subscribe to the channel. And if you get any value from this video, please tap that like button. It helps out my channel tremendously. If you have any questions or opinions on the Vancouver real estate market, hit up those comments below. I love to hear others' opinions and engage or answer your questions. If I can help in any way at all, do not hesitate to call, text, email. All my contact info is below. If you don't reach out, I can't help. As well, you can find the links below to my free home buyer and home seller course to learn the best practices when buying or selling your next property. And if you're thinking of purchasing a pre-sale, don't even dare without first downloading my guide to understanding the pre-sale process in British Columbia, linked below. One last thing before we jump into the video, we start macro looking at greater Vancouver as a whole and dive deeper into each city across the lower mainland. But if you're truly looking to buy or sell, we need to dive one level deeper into the sub areas of each city because the same phenomenon that I show you in this video when we look closer and all the differences reveal themselves happens again within each city when we dive into specific areas. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hey guys, Mark Parsons here with eXp Realty, back with your real estate market update to give you true perspective on what's really happening across the lower mainland in the real estate market. Now I've switched things up a bit today from my previous market updates, but I promise if you stick with me, you will understand how to gauge the real estate market better than most real estate agents out there. So how do we determine... Uh, if prices are going to go up, down, or sideways. And how we determine this is, is figuring out if the market is in a buyer's market, a seller's market, or a balanced market. And exactly how do we come to that metric? This is what I'm gonna explain on this graph here. So what we do is we measure inventory, against sales. Uh, in this graph here, anything you see in the blue, these blue bars are inventory. Uh, this is detached homes across the um, Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver, dating from 2018 all the way to 2021. So we're looking at uh, some real perspective here, not just what's happening recently. But what we do is we measure inventory on the market versus sales. So um, to make things easy, let's say, uh, so the blue is inventory and the green down here is sales for month by month. So to make things easy, let's say you had uh, 100 homes on the market. There's inventory of 100 homes and 20 homes sold that month. So 20% of those homes sold, or if nothing else changed in terms of inventory, you would have five months of homes on the market. So anytime that the ratio between the inventory and the sales is greater than 20%, that is when you're sitting in a seller's market. So uh, what we've taken is the ratio of inventory to sales of each of these months, and we've graphed it as a percentage here to see when we're in a buyer's market, a seller's market, or a balanced market. So we've got the ratio measured over here, and we've got the raw numbers of the inventory and sales over here. So anytime it, the, the number exceeds 20%, you've got less than five months of inventory, that's when it's it's considered a, um, a seller's market. And if you're in a seller's market for a sustained period of time, uh, it's very likely that you're going to see prices go up. Now, if the if that ratio is below 12%, which is what this bottom yellow bar represents, when that ratio drops below 12%, that is when you're pushing upwards of about 10 months of inventory on the market. When you have 10 months or more of inventory on the market, that's when you're sitting in a buyer's market. And if the market stays there for a sustained period of time, typically three months or more, you will see prices start to drop, which we did see back uh, in 2018. Now, the interesting part about this, when we're going to get into the next slide is we'll be looking at just uh, July here and you'll see that uh, it's come down into what would be considered a reasonable seller's market. But if we look closer, market by market, city by city, there are some that are down here, almost in buyer's market, and some that are substantially higher than that. So that's a point that we're going to get at here. But if we look at detached homes, 
This is, again, this is a general statistic. So this is very much what you would see reported in the newspaper or uh, online headlines. But when you see, when we dive a level deeper, you're going to see that there's so much more uh, that would never get reported on when we get in the specifics. And that's why if you're looking to buy in a certain area or sell in a certain area, these general statistics don't really mean anything to you. But I just want to get the point across of understanding how to know, A, what type of market we're in and where it will drive prices. So in 2018, uh, coming through towards 2019, as the uh, the absorption rate dropped below 12%, uh, for months and months on end, and here it kind of staggered around. It really didn't uh, uh, get out of it till um, till about September of 2019. And what we notice is this precursor leading into 2019. In many markets for detached homes, we saw homes prices drop. Uh, upwards of 10% and more. And on a $1.5 million home, that means your home price had dropped by, uh, you know, 150,000, some more, some less, but but significant price reductions. Uh, of course, all of that has been a race now, but let's now hop into detached homes the month of July, July, 2021. Uh, so this is what we're looking at here. It's showing that the absorption rate is probably about 24%. And uh, let's see how it is when we dig a little closer. Now, this is the reason why it's very important to be working with an agent who can really dig through these numbers and just show you what is real. Because if we look at the general market, we're, you know, we are just in the, entering into a seller's market at about 23 or 24%. But when we come area by area here, if we look over in West Vancouver, uh, West Side Vancouver, that's at a 12% absorption rate, 13% absorption rate. Over here, they're sitting at approximately 10 months of inventory on the market. Certainly nothing like this picture shows you here. And then if you come over to Pitt Meadows, they're at 108%, meaning they have less than one month of inventory on the market. So there's 50%. Pitt Meadows last month was somewhere way, way, way up there. The point that I'm making is that these general stats that we're getting really... Uh, they're they're quite irrelevant if you're looking to buy or sell a home. Yes, they're uh, you know if you're living in your home for the next ten years, and these are good gauges to kind of see what uh, what the market is doing, what uh, uh, direction the market is going. So um, as I said before, leading up to here is when we saw the price drops, and then uh, come this was July, so June 2020, right after we kind of. Uh, had a couple months of taking in uh, uh, COVID being introduced and the pandemic. You can see this is when we entered a seller's market where it is maintained above and, and you know, some areas are much higher, some are lower, but this is where we've seen those significant price increases over the year, which we will get into. But if we look at last month, the point I'm trying to make here is that every market is unique. So what we have here in the yellow, these are considered balanced markets. So uh, those are the markets that would be sitting in here. So likely you'll probably have um, uh, little to no price change if the if the market stays in that balance zone below the seller's market or above the buyer's market and below the seller's market. That is where West Vancouver, West Side Vancouver and Richmond were last month. Anything in the red has less than two months than inventory or is over 50%. So any, although the average is here, any, any city that you see in the red, Mission, Maple Ridge, Pitt Meadows, Cloverdale, Langley, Abbotsford, they are above 50%. Though, so they're up here somewhere, way, way above what you're seeing there. Um, North Delta, Ladner, uh, everything you see in the red is less than two months of inventory or above 50% up here. Now, when we get to the orange, this is ones that are still in seller's markets, but have more than two months of inventory. So between two to five months of inventory, um, uh, Port Coquitlam, Coquitlam, Port Moody, uh, North Vancouver, East Van is at 26%. So that's just kind of, uh, you know, it's a, it's firmly in a seller's market, but not the likes of, uh, you know, New West at 44% or Port Moody at 41 or Port Coquitlam at 45. But if you look at this, what you can see is anything in the red has less than two months of inventory, meaning it's above 50%. Anything in the orange, and you can look at it geographically, so you can kind of see that circle of where, uh, and then you ha do have Tawasin down there, where they're between two and five months of inventory, uh, or between uh, 20 and 50%, which means those cities are laying in between here and here. 
And then with West Vancouver, West uh, Van and Richmond, um, we're sitting in this area. So we've got no buyer's markets for, uh, uh, no official buyer's markets uh, for detached markets in the month of July. And then let's go down and look at prices. And if we look here, even year over year, uh, so prices, I've color coded them to uh, give a little bit of perspective. So up to 5% increase year over year is in the yellow. So East Van at 4%, West Side, Vancouver at 5%. That's if we compare July 2021 to July 2020. The orange is between 5 and 10%. So North Vancouver, New West, Richmond, South Surrey. And then the green is anything above 10%. And that really does uh, vary quite a bit. I mean, you've got Cloverdale at 31% and Langley at 28%. Uh, year over year price increase, Abbotsford 29, North Delta uh, 26. And then you've got some that are a little closer to that 10% mark, like uh, Coquitlam is at 16%, West Vancouver 18%. But anything in the green, I mean, a 10% or more year over year price increase is, is very significant. We know this uh, for buyers trying to get in the market, uh, as well as when we look at our, our assessed values that come in that aren't accurate evaluations of your property, but you definitely uh, will see them going up. So that is for D to give you a, a gauge on the market. Again, uh, this is monthly buyer or seller's market, anything in the red, less than two months of inventory, anything in the orange, two to five months of inventory, yellow balanced market for, uh, for detached homes. Um, price increases over 10% or more, but typically about between 10 and 30%, anything in the green, between 5 and 10% in the orange, and 0 to 5% in the yellow. Uh, and now we get the condos, which again, the same graph we're looking at. We're looking at inventory versus uh, uh, versus sales. So that's how we get our absorption rate, which is in the red here with the percentages there. Uh, Sellers market up here, buyers market down here, and balanced in the middle. So, uh, you know, this is back when we were seeing prices significantly increase. This was after. So, in in the 2015, 2016, we saw significant increases on detached homes leading up to the foreign buyer tax being implemented. After that, uh, when they were, let's say, getting in an area where people maybe thought those increases were too much, the pressure came over to condos and townhomes. Uh, then we went into uh, kind of a lull in the market. And again, uh, condos and townhomes, uh, May, June 2020, crossed back over in a seller's market territory and have been there ever since. Now, condos and townhomes usually move in unison historically, but over this last year, townhomes were moving a little more like uh, like detached homes where condos were kind of on their own. So that was a little something a little different that we have seen over uh, the past year. So let's dive deeper now. Again, this is a general statistic of condos and townhomes uh, of Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver. So now we're looking at the monthly variance for condos and townhomes. What is in a, oh, that's, uh, Okay, so now we're looking at the monthly. Are we in a buyer's market or a seller's market or a balanced market? So again, guys, anything in the red here uh, represents less than two months of inventory or over 50% absorption rate. So anything in the red, North Van, Port Moody, Port Coquitlam, Pitt Meadows, Maple Ridge, New West, Cloverdale, Langley, Abbotsford, South Surrey, Ladron, Delta, Tawasson, those ones are actually uh, above the... so. We're looking at just July here. So this is the average overall, but the markets I just mentioned are above 50%. So they're up here. Now, anything in the orange uh, is still a seller's market because we don't have any markets in condos and townhomes in July that dipped into balanced markets. So these are all still seller's markets, but they have somewhere between two to five months of inventory. Uh, Mission at 39%, Surrey at 48%, almost made that other category. And uh, the more expensive markets are where uh, it's a little lower, which is West Vancouver at 29%, still a very firm uh, solid seller's market. Uh, downtown Vancouver at 24%, still a firm seller's market. But anything you see in the orange, which is kind of the more expensive markets here, you can see that pocket. But Surrey and Mission did pop in there, kind of anomalies. But uh, we would expect that the, uh, the more expensive markets will likely be, uh, you know, not quite as hot as uh, these other ones here. So anything that you see in the orange there, uh, again, this is a map of the lower mainland, even if it doesn't look like it, there is the, the Fraser River there. So there is where uh, uh, 
uh, for the river where it separates Pitt Meadows, Mission Maple Ridge, and here is a river where it separates Greater Vancouver and Fraser Valley. So uh, anything in the orange is somewhere between this 50% and 20% uh, and there. And if we look at year over year price increases for condos and townhomes, um, believe it or not, what you see in the red is where prices have dropped. And in West Vancouver, there were major, major fluctuations. And guys, do take this with a grain of salt. Because let's say last year, um, in July 2020, they had uh, an anomaly of having some very, very high-end uh, condos and townhomes sell in West Vancouver, which brought their average price up to a certain point. Well, then if you compare July 2020 uh, with 2021, and that didn't take place, it says sale prices are down 32%. I would say that uh, uh, they're not up and they're down, but I would say if we look at the months going forward, you, have, you always have to take major anomalies with a grain of salt look at them in the next months and likely it will be a more balanced number but uh the statistics show down 32 percent in west vancouver again uh take it with a grain of salt uh port coquitlam again it could be something uh similar but it's down seven percent not nearly as extreme uh averages can be skewed by uh by months that had you know major sales when they're when they're getting uh uh, when they're getting compared but still it definitely definitely does paint a picture abbotsford down two percent um, anything in the yellow is uh, a positive increase in prices year over year, up to 5%. So Richmond, Ladner, 2, 4, East Van, 4%, Surrey, 5%, Downtown Vancouver, 1%, North Van, 3, uh, Coquitlam, 3%. So anything in the yellow you're seeing is uh, between z um, 1% and uh, up to 5% increase in price. Pitt Meadows balance out at zero, same prices for condos and townhomes as they did last year. Um, orange is between five and 10%. So West Side Vancouver up 7%. New Westminster up 8%. And then anything in the green, which is the majority, is up 10% or above. And you can see the numbers fluctuate drastically. So Tawasson up 28%, Mission up 34%, Maple Ridge up 12 Langley 14 Cloverdale 26 Surrey 17 Port Moody 18 Burnaby 14 The point that I'm making, guys, is that when we look at general statistics like this, which are great to get a gauge on the market, they do not paint the picture you need to know if you're looking to buy or sell a property in any of these individual areas. Because as you can see, these averages, some are way up here and some are way down there. Uh, it's really important to know exactly um, how the areas are performing in the area that you're looking to purchase, the property type that you're looking to purchase, and the price range that you're looking to purchase, because these are all sub-markets uh, throughout it. So hopefully you learned something here right now, as long as it stays above this 20% uh, mark, although we will see prices increasing at a much slower level because we're not sitting at uh, those areas. But that is in general, guys, because, I mean, if we come and look at Pitt Meadows where uh, – it's at 108% somewhere up here. Well, yes, as long as people continue, there continues to be not enough inventory for the amount of buyers there, which is what that absorption rate represents, then in areas like this, if it continues anything like this, we're going to see greater price increases here than we would see in any of these oranges or any of these yellows. So it is going to fluctuate from market to market, guys. So I'm going to cut this short now. Uh, I know these are long videos. If you have any questions, if I can help out in any way, if you want the specifics on a particular property type area, you're looking to buy or sell real estate, don't hesitate to reach out. This is how you cut through the noise and the headlines and everything that we see uh, in the real estate uh, market through the media. Real estate is a hot topic for the media, but very rarely are they peeling back the layers of the on onion and giving you any perspective whatsoever on what important for you based on where and what you're buying so thanks a lot guys any questions do not hesitate to reach out bye for now so there you have it guys hopefully that gave you some true perspective on what is happening across greater vancouver in the real estate market share your opinions and questions in the comments i respond to each and every one if you're thinking of buying or selling check out my free home buyer and home seller courses link below as well as the pre-sale guide call text or email anytime if you don't reach out i can't help see you on the next video